Intel recently released its Skull Canyon NUC PC. There's two things that make it unique. Of course, it comes with Intel's latest quad-core CPU, but it also features high-end integrated graphics from AMD. That's a collaboration that I thought I would never see. The second thing that makes this unique is that it's designed to be the world's smallest VR system. Is it any good as a VR PC though? Let's break it down. The AI7 HVK model, which I'm reviewing here, is an evolution of Intel's NUC PCs that have been around for years. At 8.7 by 5.5 by 1.5 inches, it's a little bigger than previous NUCs, but it's also much faster, especially in the graphics department. Like other NUCs, it's a bare bones kit, which means it doesn't come with RAM, storage, or an operating system. You'll have to install those yourself. Despite its small 1.2 liter stature, it's got a ton of ports. On the back, it features an optical jack, two USB-C ports, two mini display ports, two ethernet ports, four USB 3.0 ports, and an HDMI port. On the front, it's got an SD card slot, a USB-C port, two easy access USB 3 ports in addition to a front-facing HDMI connection, which makes plugging in VR headsets really easy. It's also got enough ports for a four sensor Oculus Rift setup if you're so inclined. Aesthetically, the device looks pretty clean. Perhaps Intel thought it looked a little too simple for gamers, so they decided to stick an RGB skull on the top. It looks a little garish to me, but users can customize the colors or can turn off the lights if they so choose. I think I would have preferred a cleaner two-tone color palette myself. Maybe something along the lines of, I don't know, the Xbox One S. At three pounds, the NUC is very portable, though its bulky gaming laptop style power brick is almost the size of the system itself. Just because the actual system is small doesn't mean it doesn't pack a punch. On the CPU side, Intel has equipped it with a Core i7-8890G, which is a four-core, eight-thread, 100-watt TDP processor. The secret weapon here, though, is AMD's Radeon RX Vega M GH integrated GPU. It features 24 compute units and has four gigabytes of high bandwidth video memory. It's the fastest integrated graphics out there. There's also a lower-end NUC version that comes with a 65-watt TDP quad-core processor and an integrated Vega GPU with four fewer compute units, too. The NUC supports up to 32 gigabytes of RAM across two SODIMM slots. It also supports two M.2 NVMe storage drives, which allow for much speedier SSDs. When push comes to shove, though, how does the NUC perform in VR? To get down to the matter, I ran a couple of tests. First up is Valve's Steam VR benchmark. The NUC scored a 4.6, which, according to Valve's test, puts it in the medium tier. I also ran VR Mark to get a second opinion, and Future Mark's VR test gave it a 51.33 score, which is considered great and ranks it slightly above the VR ready minimum spec. Putting it through its paces myself, I played several VR games on it. Games like Job Simulator and Beat Saber ran perfectly fine, but more graphically demanding games like In Death and Gunheart couldn't consistently hit 90 FPS and it had to reproject frames, which is a performance saving shortcut. These games were playable, but you shouldn't expect to run graphically demanding games on high settings or crank up super sampling here. I would say the NUC performs roughly on par as a gaming laptop with an NVIDIA GTX 1060 Max-Q GPU. While I could get the NUC to power both the Rift and the Vive, it wouldn't work with the Vive Pro. HTC's higher end headset would just split the screen across my TV and the headset. Something similar would occasionally happen on the Rift if you turn the NUC on with the headset plugged in, but you could circumvent this by leaving it unplugged until it boots the Windows. Beyond VR, the NUC is also just a capable gaming rig. It should be able to run the most popular games maxed out at 60 FPS on a 1080p monitor. At $1,000, is Intel's NUC worth it? It will be a bit of a hassle to find the missing components and install in this thing, but if you're looking for something small, portable, and that's VR capable, this is a pretty cool device. It's great for you know putting into a backpack with an Oculus Rift and some sensors, so you can go to a friend's house and show them how cool VR is. If you're looking for something like that, this is a pretty cool buy. I want to take this opportunity to thank all my patrons for making this crowdfunded video possible. If you would like to see more awesome VR videos, you can donate to my Patreon via the link in the description, where you'll get early access to videos, exclusive content, and more. Thanks.